These were the qualities of the people. They would earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wouldn't you like to know what these qualities are? So that we can be saved from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, my worshippers, the worshippers of the most merciful, these are their qualities. He starts off by saying, verse number 63, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا And indeed, the worshippers of the most merciful, when they walk on the earth, they walk in a specific way, filled with humility and humbleness. They are recognized by the way they carry themselves. The worshippers of the most merciful, they are recognized by the way they carry themselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of dignity, people of respect, people who carry themselves in the best possible way, remembering that they are the worshippers, or that we are the worshippers of the most merciful. So if you carry yourself well, you are actually calling the mercy of Allah upon you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. When a believer, true believer walks, he's not rushing. Obviously, once in a while, you may be in a slight rush. Make sure that that does not cause injury or harm to yourself or to others. When a mu'min, a true believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is driving, he is careful of the road rules so that not to hurt someone else and not to harm himself. Because this body, he knows it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a true believer is in any conveyance, he makes sure that he is with dignity. Say you are on a plane or a train or a bus. A true believer, the one who worships the most merciful, is concerned about the well-being of the rest of the human beings who share the same mode of transport. There are people with you on the bus. You don't just, you know, listen to whatever you're listening to so loudly that you're disturbing the people. Or you open up your food in a way that the aromatic samosas and everything else, smelling for everyone, looking at you, and you smiling, eating it, and nodding your head and licking your lips. That's not a believer. You carry yourself so well that you share with others. They are human beings. Subhanallah. It's not enough to just carry yourself well. The next part of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا When the ignorant address the true worshippers of the most merciful, the response is peace. So even the way the true worshippers speak, saves themselves from a problem with ignorant people. You know this man argues, you know that this man is picking on you, you know that this person, this woman or this man is actually trouble and still you want to get back and respond in a way that will flare the inferno? Not at all. Never. True believer, you know. So when someone starts up with you, you can smile back and say, Salam, peace, walk away. Peace. If you want to say something, say a good word. Walk away. Your expression as a believer will save you from a lot of problems on earth and even in the akhirah. Because your expression, my beloved brothers and sisters, can actually be an act of charity rewardable by paradise. Tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqa. You know that the Prophet ﷺ says, to smile at the face of your brother is actually an act of charity. So imagine. Your expression would actually help you in a very, very big way. And if that was the case, what about your words? Choose your words wisely. If you're a believer, remember, when you just say whatever comes to your mind by your tongue, without thinking about it deeply, without selecting the correct words, then indeed you have wasted the function of the brain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. You want to say something, you know what you want to say. There's one more stage before you actually say it. Choose the best words to say it. Then you say it. So instead of saying, for example, shut up, you can say, silence please. Subhanallah. Or you can say, please be quiet. Or you can just sometimes look, if it's your own child, you can just look at them. And it's enough. So it depends. For every situation, there is a response that is the most befitting for that particular situation. Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the worshippers of the most merciful because they will earn the mercy of Allah in this world and the next. So Allah says, when the ignorant address you, do not get into an argument. You know there is a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu says, a person who leaves arguments 
even if he knows he's right, would actually be promised a place in Jannah. Subhanallah. Because you didn't argue. Don't want to argue. You want to learn? I will teach you. We want to discuss? Let's discuss it respectfully. You want to argue? Sorry, not me. Subhanallah. Not me. I'm out of here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And may Allah make us from those who do not argue and who do not respond to argument except in the best possible way. Even if you look like a fool, keep on saying salam, walk away. The next time, peace, walk away. Subhanallah. Even if they continue to try, you know, some people, it's their job. Every time they see you, they want to pin. You know, they want to twist. They want to key. No, no, no. I'm not going to be a little Mickey Mouse that actually goes according to your key. No way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how those believers, now these are all qualities. Tonight we're going to speak only about the qualities of those whom Allah loves. And He calls them worshippers of the most merciful. He did not say worshippers of Allah. He chose a name of His because all these qualities would call the mercy of Allah. They would deserve the mercy of Allah. So if you have the mercy of Allah, you have saved yourself from the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا The true worshippers of the most merciful who are searching for the mercy of Allah at night, they spend their night between prostration and bowing. Ruku' and sajda. They spend a portion of the night in salah. What would this mean? Allah did not even speak about the five daily prayers because those are obligatory, they are in order. Now you want the mercy of Allah, you need to make an extra effort. Come on my brothers and sisters, once in a while, get up for Salatul Tahajjud. Fulfill even if it means two units, fulfill them. Start off in one way or another. I give you a good way forward. Nowadays, we get up to eat, don't we? What is it called early in the morning? Suhoor, right? Not breakfast please, not seven o'clock, no. We get up, subhanallah, in this part of the world, we have perhaps the shortest fasts in the world. At the moment, perhaps one of the shortest fasts in the world. Only 11 and a half hours, if I'm not mistaken. So, if you get up at quarter to six, for example, half past five, for example, you have enough time to make wudu, to fulfill two units, four units, six units of tahajjud, two is also okay. And to make a dua to Allah, because at that time, the last third of the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven, asking the people, who is there who is calling out to me that I can respond to him or her? Who is there who is asking me a need that I can reply? Who is there who is seeking forgiveness that I can forgive? We cannot be awake at the time and only bothered about our oaths and our conflicts. That's not good enough. You are awake at the time, yes, your food is important. But that's not the only thing. There is something way beyond the importance of food. And that is the call of Allah. The most merciful is saying, Hey, I would like to forgive you. Are you asking for the forgiveness? We're busy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And we're awake at the time. We're awake. Wallahi, we're awake. So I call on you tomorrow morning, remind each other, if you're staying in the same home, then listen, call out to Allah. This is the time of mercy. While we're eating. No problem. While you're on the table, you can still call out to Allah. You can do two things at once. But you can't eat while you're in tahajjud, please. You can't eat while you're in salah. No, it doesn't work that way. So the tahajjud, you'll have to get up five minutes earlier, ten minutes earlier. And you are getting up anyway. What do you lose? Allah says, you want the mercy of Allah. Ibadur Rahman. They are the ones who spend the night between sujood and ruku'. So if you are used to it in the month of Ramadan, I promise you outside Ramadan, your eye will just open because you're used to it. Ask those who are regular with Salatul Fajr. Before the Mu'addin starts, already the eye is open. It's Fajr. Before the clock rings, already they are up. Subhanallah. Because they're used to it. This body is computerized already. Subhanallah. But we don't realize this. So that is something absolutely important to spend the night in prayer.